this business, a new 5 Series BMW is always a major event. I've been doing this job for a bit more than 20 years and driven five generations of these cars and I've never sat in one for the first time and not discovered that instantly and obviously it was far and away the best car in its class. That is until now. It's not that this new 5 Series is in any way a bad car, in fact it's a very good car, a very capable and competent car as you might expect from BMW. The only thing is it's not quite as good as history has suggested it might be. It is not the instant class leading car that previous generations of 5 Series have so obviously been. I think the looks of this car are very telling. It's a much more bland, conservative style than the last 5 Series which itself was criticised a bit for appearing too avant-garde. And the result is a car that's been launched now that actually looks a little bit older than the one that it's replacing. And the car drives in much the same way as it looks. It is a more grown-up car than the previous generation of 5 Series. And that makes it, in many ways, a better car. It's more refined, uh, it's clearly got better ride quality, but so too is it also slightly less fun to drive. And to anybody who has owned 5 Series BMWs and appreciates just how much fun these large four-door saloons have been in the past, that is perhaps something of a shame. Then again, we mustn't forget what these cars are used for most of the time. In fact, for most people, uh, this new 5 Series will probably fit into their lives rather better than the old one. They may not love it quite so much, but they will appreciate and admire its many important abilities. The interior is much more grown up than the last one. The materials are better. The whole thing works better. The new uh, iDrive interface is exceptionally good, going from quite clearly the worst of its type in the class to easily the best. Just as importantly, there's now a whole load more room in the back of this car. They've extended the wheelbase by 80 millimetres, um, which is a huge amount, and there's almost as much room in the back of this now as there is in a Mercedes E-Class, and that's the first time that's ever happened. It means that for the first time ever, four decent-sized adults can travel in comfort, and when you're buying a car in a class such as this, even if you're a business traveller or if you have growing children, that is an incredibly important consideration. That longer wheelbase also confers another advantage upon this new 5 Series. It makes it ride substantially better than the old one. Uh, this car is actually built on a shortened 7 Series platform and with the new suspension uh, that's carried over from the 7 Series, this is an extremely comfortable car. It may not be quite as good as an E-Class, but nobody's going to drive this car and find the ride in any way deficient. The flip side of that is that in the corners, although it is extremely competent, very, very capable. Some of the agility of the previous 5 Series does appear to have been lost. Do not misunderstand me, this new 5 Series is an excellent car. It will sell very well and it will deserve to. What it is not though is the runaway best car in its class. To anybody else, having a car that comes into its category as one of the very best that you can find would be a right result. But to BMW, manufacturer that has been creating the finest car in this class for well over 20 years now, I suspect it will come as ever so slightly a bit of a disappointment.